We are on the threshold of a new era in manned spaceflight, the era of the space shuttle. Launched like a rocket, orbiting like a satellite, and landing on a runway like a plane to fly again, the shuttle represents the commitment to use the resources of space for the benefit of mankind. Each shuttle will be used a hundred times or more. It is the first spacecraft built to be reusable, the first designed to return payloads, and the first to be planned for cost-effective routine space operations. Space Shuttle 101, the Enterprise, has successfully completed subsonic approach and landing tests. Space Shuttle 102 shares its name with the Apollo 11 Command and Service Module, the Columbia. Rockwell International is proud to have built both of the Columbias for NASA. The shuttle orbiter, Columbia, will be launched from Kennedy Space Center, and another launch landing site is being readied at Vandenberg Air Force Base. After the shuttle reaches some 24 miles in altitude, the solid rocket boosters a jettison to be recovered and reused. Just prior to orbit, the external tank is jettisoned. The space shuttle orbiter can stay in space for one orbit up to 30 days, depending upon the mission to be flown. A variety of payloads will be loaded in the huge cargo bay. The shuttle can carry up to 65,000 pounds and return up to 32,000 pounds to Earth. The cargo bay is 60 feet long and 15 feet in diameter. A typical flight might have a satellite to be launched from orbit, as well as complex scientific equipment that never leaves the cargo bay. Simultaneously, the shuttle can carry scientists and, of course, the flight crew. The flight crews will be comprised of veteran astronauts, as well as new pilots and mission and payload specialists. At the end of a mission, the shuttle returns to Earth, bringing back payloads that might include satellites in need of repair, products manufactured in space, or scientific equipment. The capability to reuse the orbiters, to return cargo, and to launch every two weeks is the capability to use space routinely, and thus economically. The early missions will be devoted to continue learning how to best utilize the unique environment of space. The emphasis is on how to solve Earth problems in areas like energy, crop prediction, communications, and medicine. Already under consideration are programs that have enormous implications for mankind. Manufacturing in a zero-gravity environment offers unique opportunities in the production of ultralight alloys, large crystals for electronic circuits, and new medicines. The ability to service satellites in space or return them to Earth for service will encourage the development of new global systems of electronic communications for business, personal and public service applications. Large-scale space structures, such as solar power satellites assembled in space by shuttle crews, will help us meet our future energy needs. The possibilities are limited only by the imagination. These are only a few of the foreseeable benefits of the space shuttle era. Like the manned space flights before it, we can expect the space shuttle to change our technologies and profoundly affect the way we view life itself.